I am Verena Sidesheva, lecturer of the IT and digital resources in teaching foreign languages. Welcome to the third lecture, possibilities of using Zoom meeting Skype platform in distance learning. Outline for today's lecture is the first question, use of smart techniques in teaching a foreign language. The second question, using the Zoom meeting. And the last question for discussion, how to use the Skype platform. Keywords. SMART is an acronym that stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time-based. Zoom is a web-based video conferencing tool with a local desktop client and a mobile app that allows users to meet online with or without video. Skype, a brand name for an application for communicating with other people over the internet using video or voice calls. The use of smart technology in education helps to enrich traditional teaching methods and bring positive learning outcome. Smart technologies include various digital platforms, Facebook, Edmodo, TED, Google Docs, online communities, blogs, Twitter, mobile applications, digital tutorials and e-books, presentation tools, LMS, Moodle, Coursera, edX, webinars and other digital media, the use of which is possible both from a desktop computer or laptop, and from smart devices, tablets, smartphones, smart TV. If the goal is to develop intercultural communicative competence, though the use of smart techniques in foreign language teaching, both the quality and content of teaching will change. The Internet creates a natural language environment that allows a foreign language learner to use authentic texts, listen to the speaker, communicate with them, learn about the foreign economy, compare it with the domestic one, present their ideas. E.S. Polat pointed out that, regardless of the nature of any teaching tool, information thematic environment, didactic issues, the specifics of cognitive activity, conditioned by the specific goals of education, are in the first place. Therefore, the Internet, along with all its capabilities and resources, is a tool for achieving these goals and objectives. Let me focus on the opportunities and services provided by the Internet for the formation of intercultural competence in foreign language teaching. For example, students can complete assignments and exercises in documents provided on the Internet, exchange emails in the language they are learning, and participate in virtual communication clubs and conferences. At the same time, they have the opportunity to exchange text messages and listen to radio pro programs, watch videos in their own direction, that is, to use any type of information. The ability to quickly deliver information to any distance, the ability to use remote sources of information, interactive search engines and independent search, as well as the transfer of the received material to different languages and etc. Similarly, the advantages of the Internet are used. Effective use of smart technology in the classroom. Effective for students. And change the delivery of material to students by working with websites and other resources for the teacher. Provides ample opportunities for discussion and communication in the classroom. Helps students and teachers to make lessons interesting by using a variety of different dynamic materials. Allows the teacher to explain the new material from the center of the class. Effective for teachers, allows the teacher to create and write drawings of any applications and web resources, improves the quality of teaching materials and allows you to work effectively. Why do we need smart devices? For students who use the latest technologies such as smartphones and tablets, this board is understandable and increases the interest in the lesson. This touch screen not only works quickly, but also helps multiple students work at the same time. As the technology is updated, it becomes more complex and the materials needed for the lesson are added. The lesson can be displayed on a large screen for central memory, while students can create their own task or create another task in the same direction. They can get the necessary tools for the lesson from the resource site or work with the Internet. Helps to explain 3D objects. 
If the materials for the lesson are ready, it will help to keep the pace of the lesson. Allows you to move objects and notes on the smart screen, add comments to pictures and diagrams. Zoom, Skype and etc. programs are used to conduct practical classes, lectures and educational work online to organize conferences, examinations, online conference mode, oral examinations, state examinations. Through this system of programs, teachers and students, students and teachers are able to exchange information files of any format online. Zoom, Skype and etc. This program information system have the following advantages. The ability of both the teacher and the students to effectively choose the time and place of training. Provenance of knowledge, feedback between teachers and students, time saving, parental control, the ability to control the educational process of parents and their relationship with teacher. Zoom was founded in 2011 by Eric Yan, former vice president of Cisco WebEx. Zoom Video Communications is an American communications technology company based in San Jose, California, which offers cloud-based remote conferencing services. Zoom offers Zoom communication software that combines video conferencing, online meetings, chat and mobile collaboration. Zoom video conferencing provider is convenient for the lecture audience. The number of participants can be up to 100 people. The conference can be held for up to 40 minutes and you can record a video session for the same amount of time. The advantage of Zoom is that it provides a stable connection, works fast, does not strain the RAM of computers and smartphones. Conference participants can use a special board to broadcast and demonstrate their screen. The disadvantage is that the group conferences can be held for only 40 minutes for free. You have to pay to extend the time. However, you can extend the time by restarting a free 40-minute conference. You can register for the application through a Google account, Facebook account. After logging into your account, you can start a new conference here. Log in to another account conference and schedule your conference for a specific date and time. How does it work? Joining a meeting. Go to Zoom US, click the Join a Meeting tab. You can find the tab on the top right corner of the home page. When prompted, add your designed meeting ID. The meeting ID can be a 9, 10 or 11 digit number. The meeting ID should be provided by the host. You're in. The second way to join the conference is by the following the link. The link can be sent by the offer via email or messenger. You can join the conference immediately by clicking on the link without copying it. You can turn off your sound and your camera before entering. The picture shows a conference. You can mute and turn on audio and video using the turn off sound and stop video buttons below. In the participant section you can see the list of participants whose microphone and video are on. Click the details button, you can use the functions shown in the picture. Sharing your screen. Zoom allows users to share their screen to the entire conference call. To do so, simply click share screen at the bottom of the window. Note, only one person can use screen share at a time and one person must stop sharing before someone else can start sharing. To stop sharing the screen, simply click stop sharing. Hello! In this quick video, we're going to take a look at how to join and use a Zoom meeting. To begin, your instructor should have shared with you a meeting invitation or join URL. Using this information, navigate to the URL in a web browser. While you can use the Zoom app on your mobile device and Wi-Fi, we do not recommend these options. Using a wired internet connection on a computer will give you the most stable meeting experience. Once the meeting page loads, you will be prompted to download and run the Zoom client. Save this file to your computer and follow the setup instructions on the screen. Once the client has successfully installed, your meeting will launch. If the client does not work properly, click on the link at the bottom of the page to run the lighter version of the Zoom meeting from your browser. Once the meeting launches, you will be asked to connect to the meeting audio. Select if you'd like to connect with your phone or with your computer microphone and speakers. If you choose to connect with your computer, we recommend testing your mic and speakers using the testing tool provided. 
As always, please use a headset or headphones in order to help avoid audio feedback. Once your audio is connected, you can mute and unmute yourself at any time by clicking the microphone button at the bottom of the screen. We recommend muting your mic if you're not speaking to help avoid any audio issues for the rest of the meeting participants. To start sharing your camera, click on the video button at the bottom of the screen. You can also stop sharing your camera by clicking on this button. Once the meeting has started, you'll have some control over what you see. You can view everyone's cameras in speaker view, which highlights the active speaker as the largest camera, or switch to gallery view. Gallery view shows all of the cameras on one screen and highlights the active speaker with a border around their camera. You can also click on the full screen button to maximize the viewing space. Along the bottom of the meeting room are some additional options you'll find handy. The first is the participants list, which will show you who else is in the meeting. There's also the chat option, which lets you send messages to other users in the room. Clicking on the chat option brings up the chat panel. This can be helpful if you're having technology issues or want to ask a question without interrupting the current speaker. And that's it! All you need to know about the basics of getting started and using Zoom. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact the UTech Service Desk at 368HELP or at help.case.edu. Thanks for watching. Skype was created by Nicholas Zenstrom and Janus Fries. The first Skype appeared in September 2003. In October 2005, eBay bought the company for about $2.6 billion, but the company's annual turnover was less than $100 million. In April 2009, eBay executives were the first to announce. In middle of 2010, Skype will be traded on the stock exchange as the company's services are not compatible with the online action business. The company is headquartered in Luxembourg and has branches in London, Prague, San Jose and Tallinn. Skype is software that enables the world's conversations. Millions of individuals and businesses use Skype to make free video and voice one-to-one -one and group calls, send instant messages and share files with other people on Skype. You can use Skype on whatever works best for you on your mobile, computer or tablet. Skype is free to download and easy to use. The service is available for desktop computers, notebook and tablet computers and other mobile devices, including mobile phones. A number of companies, including Skype, produce dedicated Skype phones. Skype's benefits beyond the free and low-cost calls are set to include easy setup and good audio quality. To use Skype from a desktop computer, you just plug in a headset, a specialized VoIP phone or a regular phone. You add contacts similar to the way you do for instant messaging and then, to make a call, just click the icon next to the contact. The main advantages of Skype Free Skype chat with another friend Cheap calls to mobile phones or landlines Chat for free Voice message Free video call If you have a microphone, headphones and a webcam, you can have a video conference, see the interlocator. Skype allows you to hold an online conference for up to 100 people at a time. Skype does not offer you any advertising, so you don't have to worry about pop-ups and banners. Skype automatically encrypts all data, calls, SMS, chats and files. To use Skype, your computer must meet the following minimum system requirements. Windows 2000 or XP operating system, 400 mhd processor, 128 MB of RAM, 15 MB of disk space, speakerphone, headphones plus microphone, internet connection with a speed of not less than 33 and 6 KBS. Now I want to show you the next video about Skype. Hey everyone, in today's video, I wanted to show you how to use Skype. So if you're new to Skype, I'll walk you through some of the best options that Skype has to offer. Skype is basically a video 
an audio or a chat application and it's available for many different devices from your iPhone to Android phones to a desktop. In this video, we'll look at the desktop version. It's actually one of my favorite tools to use for video chatting and collaborating with colleagues. So jump into Skype.com, it's owned by Microsoft. So you'll get to this page here and you could go ahead and download Skype here for your device or you could check here for the different devices that it has right here but I already downloaded it for my Mac here. And once you download it, again, press download, it will download it here to your Mac and it will open up once you finish the download process. And once you launch Skype for the first time, you'll have to create an account. I already have one, but if you didn't have one, go ahead and create an account from scratch here. This will create a Microsoft account that you could use for Skype. So it's going to either ask for your phone number or email. So go through the process. I already made an account here. So I'm going to go ahead and click my username here and sign in. And this is what the Skype window looks like. I want to show you some of the most important elements here. On top, you're going to have your name here. And if you click your name, you could actually change your status from being active to away or do not disturb or invisible. So this is an important thing to know and to be able to change anytime. Your Skype username is what's underneath your name. So this is my Skype username right underneath my name. And then underneath that, it says share what you're up to. If you use Facebook, for example, this is similar to a Facebook status. So you could either type in or choose some of this here as your status. So if you're in a meeting, for example, you could do that. And it's going to say I'm in a meeting here. And you could see your Skype profile and things like that underneath. I'm going to just go ahead and click here to get out of there. Underneath that, this is the most important things that you would do on Skype. You have your chat box here, your chat icon, your calls, your contact and your notifications. So on their chats, these are all the different people that I chat with here. And on their calls, these are the people I've had calls with on Skype. This is my contact list. So everybody that's been connected with me on Skype is here. And at any time under any of these, I could start a new chat call or so on by pressing this plus sign and say new group chat or new chat or new private conversation. Same with call. I could press and choose a call to start a new call. And if I wanted to add another contact and I have their Skype name, I could press contact, find the people and invite them to my Skype here to have a conversation with them. And notification is going to just show you some of the things about Skype, such as new updates here. And as always, it has a search option where you could search for people, groups, or messages all right over here. I'm going to X out of that. And if you click this recent chat, you could sort by different time or messages that are unread. So that's the option here. That's basically everything on this side that you need to know. And you could click this dot section here to get a dial box here where you could call any number here using Skype. Now this will take some credit. So this is not the free portion of Skype but you could make calls internationally here very easily to any mobile device and you could get credit here for that. But if someone else is using Skype, these should be all free options here that you're going to be using. So let's go ahead and start a message here. So I'm under the chat icon and I could always go in the middle here and start a conversation. I could always click that and search for someone to chat with. But in this case, I'm just going to go under the chat icon and press the plus sign here to start a new chat. So I'll say new chat. And then I have to choose someone I want to chat with. This actually has a bot. So this is a tech app bot. I could, ex I could start this conversation with a bot here. And here on your messages, take a look at some of the things that you'll be using most often. Type your message here. So this is obviously a simple chat box. So if I type a message here, the other person can reply to me by doing the same thing under this chat box. And you have a bunch of different options for sending files, transferring money, video messages, and everything, even sharing location here. And when it gets sent to someone, this little icon shows up that they read the message, they received the message here. So now they could reply back. That's what's going on on the bottom. You also have your emoji icon to choose a bunch of different emojis, GIFs, stickers, and so on. On top, these are, the, these are the things that I use the most. You have your video icon to start a video call. You could start an audio call with the telephone icon and you could add other people and make this a group chat. So right now it's a single chat between me and the tech app. 
So as you can see, this chat box, I just asked it, how are you? And it responded to me and it's typing. When it types, it usually gives you this message. So now I could start the video chat, the audio chat, or turn this into a group message. These are the options I have. And as I mentioned before, I could always send it different types of files here. You could even drag and drop files into this like images and PDFs and it will send it to them. So that's a basic overview of using the Skype app on your desktop. Again, it's pretty much the same on Windows or on Mac. This is the desktop version. The mobile version is a little bit different, but the same fundamental features apply. So so here's an incoming call coming from a video so I could press that and start a call. In this case, I'm gonna press decline here and decline that call. So that's what happens when someone calls you. In this case, it was the chatbot trying to contact me. I hope you found this quick video useful. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for videos just like this posted every single day on this channel. And I hope to catch you next time. Thanks for watching. In conclusion, if the goal is to form intercultural communicative competence through the use of smart technology in foreign language teaching, both the quality and content of teaching will change. The 21st century is the century of technologies. Mobile devices, the internet have become a way of life and information technology has become an important part of human life. A digital society, a digital environment has been formed. Developed countries are increasing the opportunities for the use of technology for human benefit. The Internet provides ample opportunities for human development in different directions. From home, a person can be engaged in business, research and creativity. Social networks allow people to realize their full potential. Now, after watching my lecture, I have some questions for you. The first, how to use Zoom Cloud Meetings. The second, specify board sharing in Zoom Cloud Meetings. The third, who is the developer of Zoom Cloud Meetings. The fourth, who is the developer of the Skype platform. And the last, make a test of 10 questions on the topic with five variants. Here you can see the list of references that you can use on your lectures and practical lessons. Thank you for watching.